Let's go ahead and configure our element and atom devices so that they are recognized by my account on the Helium dashboard. What I've got at the moment is the element is plugged into my router via the Ethernet cable and also I have the Atom which is just powered via the Arduino so the Atom shield is plugged into my Arduino and then I've just applied power to the Arduino so you can see that there is activity, the red LED is blinking uh, and that means that the uh, Atom is trying to find a an element nearby. We're going to move on to the Helium website. So you can go to helium.com and you can have a look around here. A couple of quick things that you can look at is the information provided about the Atom module and the element access point. You can see some more information about these devices. But the interesting thing, of course, is in the dashboard itself. So you can go and create a free account for the dashboard. And that's what mine looks like. So I've got my Atom uh, and Elements uh, reporting data for the last few days. It shows you uh, this location, by the way, is not correct. So the geolocation is uh, not correct, uh, but it's, it's close, still in Sydney. I've got my Atom configured here and I've got the element also configured. There you go. There's my element. I'll drill into those menus in a minute. Let's go to channels and I've got a few channels here configured as I was playing around with them. I've got an MQTT. I've got a couple of uh, Heroku web apps because I was trying uh, a couple of different ways of sending data, JSON and CSV, and I'll be showing you the CSV option and I'll explain why I decided to use CSV instead of JSON for formatting my data transmissions. I was also playing around with Dweet, Dweet.io, a really nice uh, IoT online service that uh, I should probably create a different lecture about. There's quite a few things to explore there. And I'm also going to show you how to use Request Bin to send your data there if you don't want to get into the trouble of using my Heroku web app. Although I'll be giving you the code so you can configure it in any way that you like. It's all free stuff. So let's go to the Atom and drill in just so that you can get a sense of what is happening. So you can see that the dashboard gives you a view of the packets that are arriving from the Atom in real time. Of course, nothing is arriving at the moment because I haven't configured it yet. But earlier that I was playing around, I was able to send uh, a little bit of text to the dashboard from the Atom and the debugger here, the debug log will show you that string of text that as it as it arrives. And uh, it's just a bunch of numbers. So I've got the temperature, the first set, I've got the humidity, and this is the altitude. And I've also got the device ID here coming through too. And these are the configuration variables that I was telling you about earlier in the previous lecture. So I can configure variables called keys here with a specific value. And if I decide to change that value to something else and update the config, then this change will be pushed to the Atom and to the Arduino so that I can make a change to the local configuration of my application. And every time that I do such a thing, then the Atom will report back the latest value that it has received from the Helium network just to confirm that a change was actually made. So the last change that I actually did make was the location. I changed the ID of the location from 2 to 1, updated the config, that change was pushed to the Atom and then the Atom sent back the location value that it last received. Again, that is to make sure that the Atom has the latest configuration. And an event look, things that, uh, so in this case, the event look indicates the fact that a send to a HTTP request was done by 
And then I've got the event log here also for debugging a view of the data use. So very nimble kind of uh, applications here. I'm just sending three numbers really in a string of text that contains, I believe, 21 characters all up. So it's a very lightweight application. You can drill into my elements list. And you can see here what's happening with the element. Again, you get the packets. So these are the packets that are received from all of the atoms that happen to be connected to an element, not just the second element, just not just the single element. And the location again, kind of incorrect, but still in the same city. You can alloc you can connect a atom device to a element device. So remember that you can have a list of multiple atoms here connected to a single element and an event log. And finally with the channels, let's drill into my active channel, Heroku Web App CSV, and you can see a similar kind of interface here. The nice thing is that depending on the channel that you choose, the dashboard also gives you sample code that you can just copy and paste and the code that I'll be showing you pretty much is based on what I copied out of the example code for my specific channel. And the other thing that really changes uh, in here is the name of the channel. So somewhere here, uh, there you go, somewhere here, right here actually is the name of the channel to which we want to get our element to connect to and send data to and the event log. So if you're starting from scratch, totally from scratch, then what you want to do is to first add an atom to your dashboard and then an element. So let's go for the atom first. So you can give your atom whatever name you like. So I can say example atom. And then it's asking for the last four digits of the MAC address of the atom that you want to connect and the HVV identifier. So to get that, you need a really strong vision or good glasses or perhaps a magnifying glass because the last four digits of the MAC address are right here in tiny script. So you need to, to get this, the, the last four digits of the MAC address copied into the uh, MAC field. Now for the HVV, you can see there's a barcode here right on the module, uh, HVV below it. And these are the four characters that you need to copy over to the HVV fields. So I won't do it now because there's going to be a conflict between my device and the new device that I am uh, demonstrating how to connect. Once you have those bits of information copied into the two fields, you can click on activate atom and then your atom will be activated. Okay, so that's how you connect an atom. Let's move on to the element. So click on element and you can see this same kind of interface here. You can give your element a new name, example element. And then on the element at the back, you can find the MAC address right there. So there's a MAC address, again, tiny script. You need to get the last four numbers or digits, the last four characters and copy them over to the uh, MAC field. And the HVV is also under the barcode, there's HVV, and there are four characters here as well. Just be very careful because the script is so tiny, I made mistakes in copying them over. So that pro uh, that obviously caused for the connection to fail. Uh, if you are having failed attempt to connect your element or your atom to your dashboard, just uh, double check that you've got the right characters of these labels on the devices. So once you have the right characters copied into the two fields, click on activate element and the element will activate. And the last thing then is to create a channel in order for the data 
to move. Let's go back to my drawing now. You need to create a channel because what you have achieved so far is to connect the atoms and the element to your helium network. If you don't do anything else, then the data will just stay in the helium network and you won't be able to do anything with them. If you want to get your data out of the network and into some other application like Tweet IO, for example, or your application, then you need to create channels. These lines, these arrows pointing to your application are what the channels are all about. So what we'll do in the next lecture is we'll create a very, very simple channel that simply gets the data from your atom and through your element into the helium network and then it pushes it through a http post request to a request bin so then you'll be able to see your data appearing outside the helium network which is the beginning of starting to build your own web application mm -hmm.